I'm wearing my Converse High Top <laughs> All-Stars in honor of today's guest, Dr. Lawrence Krauss, author of so many books. Uh, to read their titles would take us to the end of the podcast. Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Most of the supporters of the multiverse are fellow traveling along with string theory. And you are a very, very prominent, you know, kind of outspoken critic of, of string theory uh, and what it might mean. Again, you for see, you see, I get, I get labeled. Well, I, don't, I get labeled many things. I'm a critic of hype is what I'm a critic yes. when it comes to science. So I was a critic of the hype associated with string theory. I wrote a whole book called Hiding in the Mirror, which is really about the search for extra dimensions. And it explains why string theory is very well motivated. Mm. So this, this, as a as a fundamental area of physics, is, it's very well motivated. I happen to think, probably more than loop quantum gravity, but but mm -hmm. but um, but it's the hype. It, it's this interesting idea that was claimed to be able to tell us everything, and it's told us virtually nothing, except providing an incredible amount useful mathematical tools to apply to other physical systems. Anyway. Yeah, actually, I, I want to turn to that because your friend, uh, Stephen Hawking, late great Stephen Hawking, he would often, you know, concede bets. And on the basis of, uh, of, of a proof from, say, Juan Maldacena in, you know, five-dimensional ADS-CFT, uh, you can recover back in Stephen Hawking, you can get all sorts of information. But I want to ask you, like, I mean, I, I feel like he conceded that too easily. Like, how do we know uh, that, that ADS-CFT even exists? It's true. No, I, I think, no I think for, look, uh, uh, Stephen's a wonderful man, but he's also a very astute um, promoter, <laughs> yeah. and and I think he did some things he did because he he realized they'd get attention, and mm -hmm. I, I I tend to think that was the case. Yeah. By the way, I, I'm really pissed that I had a, I had what I thought should have been a famous bet with with Hawking and Wilczek, which I won. It was shortly after um, the dark energy was discovered mm -hmm. that I argued, and there was a great deal of uh, of all this hype about, oh, could test it somehow, we'll be able to measure, uh, you know, that it's changing and blah, blah, blah. And I, and I said, within a decade, there will be no, nothing that will be able to tell us that, that it, it, uh, it, the dark energy is changing. There'll be yeah. nothing that will be able to tell you that it is a cosmological constant and therefore there's nothing that tells you it isn't. And, right. and there'll be no, there'll be no observational data. And they say, oh, no, 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 within a decade. It's my surprising friends, because I, in his book, which I have somewhere here, and I talk, a beautiful question, We'd written in 2014, uh, he makes a claim that within five years, supersymmetry will be discovered. So yeah. I feel a Frank that as Sir Roger Penrose once said, the, the quickest way to get rich is to make a bet with Stephen Hawking, because no matter what you bet, he's going to concede because of the attention, I think. And, uh, and, and oftentimes he would have two different positions. But, on the I, same but, they, oh, but you don't become rich by betting with Stephen Hawking, you just get some <laughs> notoriety. So first of all, whether I, you know, it, it, putting people in camps worries me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the claimed progress in string theory. I have great respect for for the work that's being done in many ways. Which I mean, I, Ed Witten is another friend of mine and and someone I admire tremendously for their abilities. Um, but but you know, but string theory isn't quantum quantum. It, it hasn't explained the world. But but that has nothing to do with a, whether a, a multiverse is a very sensible idea. The, the, the really sensible multiverse, the, the well-motivated multiverse is not the multiverse of string theory, the extra dimensional many universes. Mm -hmm. the, the, the only one that is inescapable, it seems to me, is the one from inflation. One of the knocks against string theory is that it, uh, it doesn't have, um, you know, it doesn't make predictions that are testable and therefore uh, cannot, be, cannot be falsified. And then he went into the black hole entropy that it can be reproduced to show the degrees of freedom that back in Stein in, in a two-dimensional black hole, yeah. In mm -hmm. a two-dimensional black hole. Which, which we don't live in, by the way. Yeah. Exactly, right? So I, I mentioned that. And then he said, okay, so I said, come on, Cameron. And he said, um, so for example, if you take an electron, it has a mass. And if you compute the mass of the electron in the fundamental units of physics, which is Planck mass, it's a very tiny mass in Planck mass. So, Lawrence, what, what, do, you, what do you make of that? What would you give Cumron if he takes, your, takes a, a class? I mean, he's basically saying the electron mass is prediction. It could have been 10 to the minus 32 uh, of the, of the uh, Planck mass, but it's not. It's between 10 to the minus 31 and 10 to the minus 1. Um, a big range, but it's a well, prediction. It could be well, wrong. It could be falsified. I don't think it's – well, look. It, I don't think it's worth getting hung up because the theory is just so premature 
such an early, it, it, it's not, it, it's not a well-defined theory yet, I think. And I mean, it's got a lot of great ideas and maybe it'll relate to the real universe at some point. Um, it, 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 it's, as, as I like to say, and this is a joke of Frank's, you know, it's promising, but it's been promising and promising for a long time. That's but like, um, what really disappointed me the most, to tell you the truth, is the one thing, if string theory had predicted a cosmological constant, it would have been great. But in fact, not only did it not predict a cosmological constant, but generally yeah. it has a hard time even existing with one and, and um, without a negative one anyway. And, um, yeah. and so, so, and that's the one I, I, I'm personally convinced that we won't understand the energy of empty space until we have a quantum theory of gravity. I suspect they're intimately involved with each other. Uh, and, and so... The one thing that I would want a purported theory of quantum gravity to tell me something about would be the cosmological constant. Generally, string theory would, tell, would suggest that what we're seeing now is a temporary aberration of what will ultimately be a negative uh, cosmological constant. But again, then I have uh, people like uh, Michio Kaku coming on and saying, no, because I asked him, I was like, where in string theory does one find the muon G minus two anomaly? Or where do I find the Large Hadron Collider beauty results, these anomalies and so forth. Where do I find Hubble tension? And he says, it's all there. And I say, what do you mean? He says, you just have to tell me the vacuum state. And I say, well, why is it my job as an experimentalist to tell you what the vacuum state is of your theory? And yet on the same token, the swampland, et cetera, it, it seems hopeless, Lawrence. And, and I'm wondering why is it that, that you get so much attention from people like you know, Kaku with the God equation and Stephen Hawking even talking about M theory as if it's proven, as if all physicists it accept it. Because it sounds profound and everyone wants the next best thing, mm -hmm. you know, it, after Einstein. And if string theory w were a theory of, 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 uh, of space and time, then obviously at some level, and a, theory, and a complete theory that from which all the forces of nature were derivable, then obviously it's in there. Because, you know, if it really were a theory of all, all the forces of nature, then all the things we measure must be a part of that. Mm -hmm. so, so it's a tautology almost. So, of course, yeah. in principle, it's there. But, we don't, but first of all, A, we don't know how to do it. But more importantly than that, we don't know if it is. We don't know if, it, it, if this incredibly fascinating area of mathematical physics d is a fundamental description of our universe. And I don't really care about... At this point, whether it makes predictions that you could test, because I, I think that's we're way away from that. The question mm -hmm. we really have to address is, is that there's no evidence yet. String theory describes uh, 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 our universe. If you enjoyed this video, I know you'll want to check out my interview with Frank Wilczek, winner of the 2004 Nobel Prize. In this conversation, Frank and I discuss his fascinating new book, called Fundamentals, which outlines 10 key principles to understand our universe. And don't forget to subscribe.